Hello everyone, and here's lesson one from the Physics 30 class notes. Uh, this is really just a recap of Physics 20, uh, and this is kinematics. So, first couple of examples here are just to do with this uh, idea of uniform motion. And it's very important because this crops up quite a few times in Physics 30. Uh, it's worth mentioning that this is physics principle on our data sheet uh, zero. So physics principle zero. And on the diploma, you'll be asked to key this when you are asked about which physics principle you've been used. So if you've used uniform motion, um, we want to be referencing this zero physics principle from our data sheet. Anyway, just to recap then, uh, without going into this in too much detail, in kinematics, we, we have this basic idea that uh, a velocity, if there's no acceleration, if there's no change to this velocity, then it's just the displacement or the distance divided by the time. Okay, and then if we, we go back to our physics 20 notes, we can re hopefully recall <clears throat> that we can use this concept and derive a bunch of kinematics equations, which we should be pretty good at using by now. Um, the key principle here is that there will be five variables. So there's acceleration, there's velocity, velocity, sorry, there's acceleration, there's velocity final, there's velocity initial, there's time, and then there's displacement. Those are the five variables, and in any uniform motion kinematics scenario, you'll be given three, and you'll have to find the fourth. And so really it's just a case of picking which formula to use that has the three variables that you're given and the fourth that you're trying to find. Okay, so let's have a go at a couple of simple, of example, a couple of simple examples. This first one is to do with a rock thrown up into the air. So let's just visualize what's going on. Uh, it says it's a rock thrown upwards at 64 kilometers an hour. So let's imagine the rock is here and it's thrown upwards with a velocity of 64 kilometers an hour. Now, I should be getting uh, warning signs going off already because 64 kilometers an hour is not a unit that I'm going to want to use. So I want to change this to meters per second. So I'm going to do that right away. Oops. Um, I'm going to say that 64 kilometers per hour Okay, I'm going to use my unit analysis to get rid of this. I'm going to go multiply this by hours to cancel the hours. Well, one hour has 3,600 seconds. And then to get rid of my kilometers, I want my kilometers on the bottom. Well, one kilometer has 1,000 meters. So this is going to give me my meters per second. And uh, that will give me... 17.8 meters per second. Uh, of course, I'm going to keep, this is rounded up, I'm going to keep all of these decimal places in my calculator. I do not want to be rounding up in the middle of a calculation. Just, uh, I'm just doing that to save some space. So, my initial velocity of the rock is 17 decimal, I'll put it all in here, 777 something meters per second. Okay, and this rock is going to be going up and up and up. Now, uh, we don't know if it's reached its maximum height. Okay, so this could be, uh, could be an issue. And if I wanted to, I suppose I could work out the, at this velocity, I could work out the maximum height. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and just analyze this in a straightforward way. I'm going, to look, I'm going to try and find my four variables, the three that I'm given, the one that I'm trying to find, and see what it gives me. Because this rock is obviously going to go up and up, and it's either it's either going to stop here, and I'm going to get a, a, a final velocity for it as it's going up, or it's going to keep going up, reach the maximum height, and then it's going to come back down again. And I do not know this at the moment. I do not know how far it's going to travel. Okay, so let's let's go ahead and analyze this using our variables uh, method. So I know the following things. I know the vi. I know that that is 17.77, and I'm going to go ahead and call that a positive. So I'm going to say that up 
is positive, down is negative. This is very important to keep track of. Now, I also know, I'm, I'm trying to find its final velocity. So this is my variable that I'm trying to find. I happen to know, of course, from physics 20, I know that the acceleration here is going to be downwards and constant. That's my acceleration due to gravity. And then I'm given my time in the question. Okay, it's in the air for 2.25 seconds. 2.25 seconds. Okay, so let's see if we can find a formula here that has these, these things in. Um, and it turns out it's actually going to be the first formula we come across. So there it is, acceleration, Vf, Vi, and T. Okay, that's the one I'm going to use. Um, lots of the other ones have variables in there that I don't need. Um, I could have solved this by finding the D, which maybe I wanted to use this one. But then I would have had to use another equation to, 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 get, that, uh, to get that Vf. And, and so on. So, <clears throat> yeah, lots of different options here, but this is going to be the, the, the quickest one to give me the, the right answer. So let's go ahead and plug that in. Um, I'm going to use the acceleration is equal to the change in velocity. In other words, Vf minus Vi over T. Okay, uh, so I'm going to say At is equal Plus, sorry, AT plus this VI is going to be equal to my VF. Okay, and if I plug that in, keeping, keeping my negative in there, I get a value for VF to be negative. So it's going to be negative 4 decimal 2947 something. 294 da da da. And that's meters per second. And that's very important. That means that this negative means something. If it started off as a positive, and after a certain time it's now got a negative, this means that it must be on the way down. So this rock is going to be somewhere here on the way down. It's going to have a velocity final that's negative. Okay, and there's my value. Uh, the last thing to do is just to check significant digits. <clears throat> and so I can do that just really quickly. Looking at my question, my sig digs are going to be well, 64, so two significant digits there, three significant digits there. I need to use the smallest one in my question because that's my, uh, that's my sig dig rule. And so this means I have to round this to two. So I'm going to say that the final velocity of this rock is 4.3 meters per second. And then I'm going to state that it's down, downwards or negative. Okay, and in the second example, in lesson one, uh, here we have a little bit more of a traditional projectile motion question. Uh, this is definitely going to be important in physics 30. We're going to see this when we get into some parallel plates. Uh, we're going to see projectile motion happening when um, subatomic particles fly through various different fields. And we're essentially going to be doing the same thing. We're going to be analyzing it just like it was a projectile in physics 20. Uh, we're going to be thinking about the physics principles. And just like we did in physics 20, we're going to be analyzing this in the x, in the horizontal coordinates, but also in the y or the vertical coordinates. And the reason is because, hopefully you recall, whenever we're analyzing a projectile motion, uh, we're going to go ahead and assume there's zero air resistance. Um, and we have this force of gravity that's going to be acting downwards. In other words, the force of gravity is going to be acting in the y coordinate, which means... We're going to have an unbalanced force since there is no air resistance. There is no force due to air resistance. Uh, we can go ahead and assume that we have this constant acceleration. So in the y coordinate, we have this negative 9.81 meters per second squared. And that means that we have a physics principle, physics principle number one, at play in our y coordinate. And we still have our physics principle zero in the x because everything in the x, because there's no air resistance, everything in the x or the horizontal direction is uniform. This velocity here, this velocity horizontal is not going to change. Nothing is going to change this because there's no air resistance. And as Newton's laws say that um, there will be, this will remain the same, this, this force, will, uh, this velocity, this motion will remain the same until 
a force acts upon it. And since there is no air resistance, it's going to be constant. So this hopefully should be familiar. We're going to have our V in the horizontal, and we're going to have our D in the horizontal. And over here on the, in, the, in the vertical, we're going to have our accelerated motion formula. So we're going to have a VI, we're going to have a VF, we're going to have a D. And the thing that links these two together is the time. The time is going to be the same for both of these. Okay, and that's going to be our connector between the two sides. So let's have a think about what we have. We need to determine the speed. We know that this object travels a horizontal distance of 8.31. So we can go ahead and put that in. So we can say 8.31 meters. We know that it travels a vertical distance. It, it travels 2.75 meters vertically. Okay, and uh, actually I should just probably label this negative because it's, it's going downwards. So this is a negative 2.75. Uh, it's got this negative 9.81 acceleration. And because it's going horizontally initially, this is kind of a key point, because it's initially going horizontal, that means that the vertical velocity is going to initially be zero. This is the equivalent of just holding an object stationary and dropping it. And so we can, we can put that value in as well. We can say that our initial velocity is zero. And that's quite common in, um, in these types of questions. We're going to have this zero VI. And that's going to make our analysis a little bit easier. So what we're going to do is we're going to solve for... So here we've got three things. We've got one, two, three. We're going to solve for the fourth, which is time. Then we're going to use time to solve for the Vx. And that, of course, is going to be the initial speed of this object. All right, so um, again, pretty common here to have this zero VI. So um, we're almost certainly going to use our uh, D is VIT plus one half AT squared. Uh, so I'm just going to go through and check. D I've got, uh, VI I've got, A I've got, and T is what I'm trying to find. So there we go. And this equation is made simpler by the fact that VI is zero. So that whole thing, VIT, can be considered to be a zero. In other words, you can just uh, put a line through it. And now I'm just solving for time. Okay, so I'm going to rearrange this and solve for time. It's going to be the square root of 2D over A. And that's going to give me a time in my calculator of 0.7. Four, eight, seven. Da, da, da. I'm going to keep all those digits in my calculator, and then I'm going to bring that over here. Put that into here. Zero point seven four eight seven. Da, 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 seconds. This means I can use it over here in my x coordinate, which is physics principle zero, which is uniform motion, and so I'm using the formula v is equal to d over t, and that very simply gives me a value for the velocity, which ends up being 11 decimal one, I think. Yeah, 11 decimal one meters per second. That is the initial speed of this object.